after studying this module, you shall be able to know about the various civil and criminal responsibilities in forensic psychology, the Indian perspective on various laws. You will also learn about the doctrine of diminished or partial responsibility. So students, let us start with the introduction. Unlike criminal proceedings in which the government charges an individual with having committed an unlawful act, the civil proceedings involve disputes between the private parties as has been stated by Melton etc. all in the year 2007. Many such cases involve allegations that one party or the plaintiff has been injured by another party or the defendant and seek compensation for the damage that was done. Such actions are known as tort or personal injury cases. Here in this module, we will take into consideration the criminal and civil responsibilities both. So starting first is the civil responsibilities and there are certain points that come under the civil responsibility section. So first we will start with the management of property and custody of his person. Chapter 6 of MHA 1987 or the Mental Health Act of 1987 deals with the management of property of mentally ill person. If a mentally ill person is incapable of taking care of himself, the district court or the collector of the district may appoint any suitable person to be his guardian under section 53 of Mental Health Act of 1987. The district court may also appoint any suitable person to be a manager for the property belonging to mentally ill person and to supervise the same. The court may grant the manager the necessary power and may order the sale of property for the payment of his debts and expenses. Next is consent. According to section 90 of IPC, consent given by a person suffering from mental illness or of unsound mind becomes invalid. It is because the person by reason of unsoundness of mind is unable to understand the nature and consequences of the act to which he gives consent. Similarly, consent given by a mentally ill female to the act of sexual intercourse becomes invalid and the act amounts to rape under section 375 of IPC. Next, third in line is the business contract. As per the Indian Contract Act of 1872, a contract becomes invalid if at the time of doing such contract or making such contract, one of the parties was mentally ill. It is stated that by reason of unsoundness of mind, the person is incapable of understanding the nature and consequences of the contract. The mentally ill person is unable to form a rational judgment as to its effect up to his interest. Mental illness developing after contract does not make it invalid unless performance of service becomes impossible. Mentally ill person, when in lucid interval, may make a contract. Fourth is evidence. According to section 118 of Indian Evidence Act, a mentally ill person is not considered as incompetent to give evidence unless he is prevented by his mental illness from understanding the questions put to him and giving rational answers to them. In other words, a person suffering from mental illness can testify. However, he should be able to understand the questions properly and answers them reasonably and accordingly. If the said mentally ill person is unable to understand the questions asked and answer them properly, the court can consider him incompetent for evidence. A person suffering from mental illness but is in lucid interval is competent to give evidence. 
Fifth is the tort liabilities. Tort, to put in simple terms, is a failure to respect the general rights of others independent of a contract. This is a civil wrong. It is related with the actions of trespass, conversion or defamation etc. A mentally ill person is liable for tort unless the disease of his mind is so great that he cannot understand the nature and consequences of his act. It is to the defendant to prove that the disease of mind is so great as to entitle him to exemption from the rule of general liability. Sixth is guardianship. A mentally ill person cannot be act as a legal guardian of a minor. Next is testamentary capacity. Testamentary capacity of a person means the capacity of a person to make a valid will. To make a valid will, it should have various components. The person should be of sound mind. The person making will should understand the nature of will. The person should have knowledge of his property that has to be disposed of. The person should recognize the individuals who have moral claims to hire his property. A civil court may invalidate the will if the person making such a will is of unsound mind at the time of making the will. A will made under the influence of somebody else is also invalid. A person suffering from mental illness during the period of lucid interval can make valid will. Holograph will or a will written by a tester in his own handwriting. Next in line is marriage. According to the Hindu Marriage Act of 1955, the marriage solemnized becomes null and void if at the time of marriage due to unsoundness of mind if either party is incapable of giving a valid consent to a marriage or though capable of giving valid consent has been suffering from mental disorder of such a kind or to such an extent as to be unfit for marriage and the procreation of children or has been subject to recurrent attacks of insanity. According to section 13 of Hindu Marriage Act, a divorce can be granted on a petition presented by either spouse on the ground that the other party has been incurably of unsound mind or has been suffering continuously or intermittently from the mental disorder of such kind and to such an extent that the petitioner cannot reasonably expect it to live with the respondent, that is with the patient. Transfer of property. According to the Transfer of Property Act of 1882 and under Section 7 of this particular Act, only persons competent to contract are authorized to transfer property. In other words, person suffering from mental illness is not competent to transfer the property. Tenth is adoption. According to the Hindu Adoptions and Maintenance Act of 1956, any Hindu male who is of sound mind and is not a minor can adopt a child with the consent of his wife provided that the wife is of sound mind. Any Hindu female who is of sound mind and is not minor and is not married can adopt a child. Next, we will study about the criminal responsibility and under this, first we have the McNaughton rule. First, we will study what do you mean by responsibility. Responsibility means liability of the person of his acts or omission and the person is liable for punishment for any illegal action. The law presumes every individual to be sane, that is of sound mind and responsible for his criminal act unless the contrary is proved. The criminal responsibility of an insane got public attention in the year 1843. Daniel McNaughton, a 29-year 
old Scotsman laboring under delusion shot dead Edward Drummond, the secretary of the British Prime Minister Sir Robert Peel. McNaughton was paranoid, schizophrenic and had delusion that Sir Robert Peel was conspiring against him. He had intended to kill Sir Robert Peel but mistakenly killed Drummond. The jury, after hearing medical evidence of nine physicians, found McNaughton not guilty by reasons of unsoundness of mind. The Queen Victoria, Sir Robert Peel and other well-known persons were outraged by the verdict. They invited 15 eminent judges to the House of Lords and were requested to respond to a series of questions on the criminal responsibility of insane. The answers given by the learned judges were immortalized in the history and have come to be known as McNaughton rule or the legal test or right or wrong test. The McNaughton rule states that to establish a defense on the ground of insanity, it must be clearly proved that at the time of committing the act, the party accused was laboring under such a defect of reason from the disease of mind as to know the nature and quality of the act he was doing or if he did not know it, that he did not know he was doing what was wrong. Therefore, according to McNaughton rule, to plead not to be guilty, the accused has to prove that he was suffering from mental illness and the mental illness was of such degree that he is unable to understand the nature and quality of his act or was unable to understand what he was doing was wrong. Next is criticism of McNaughton rule. It is argued that for deciding insanity of a person only cognitive or the intellectual factors or reasons are taken into consideration but other factors also influence the conduct and behavior of a person such as the emotional factors, ability of individual to control the impulse and loss of self-control. It was held that McNaughton rule is old and obsolete and needs correction. Subsequent to McNaughton rule, new rules were provided and debated such as Curran's rule, Durham's rule and Ali's test etc. So, starting with the next is the Durham rule of 1954. The Durham's rule states, an accused is not criminally responsible if his unlawful act was the product of mental disease or mental defect. It was held that the rule was broader than McNaughton's rule. However, the rule had created problems. The rule states that the unlawful act of a person was project of mental disease or mental defect. The ambiguity was with reference to these words because what constitute mental disease or mental defect was not made clear or defined. Next thing was that the judges would have to rely on the psychiatrist to decide whether the act was project of mental defect or disease. It means giving blank check to medical evidence. Thus the judicial authorities would have little to do while rendering the independent and impartial judgment. So next came the Curran's rule in 1961 after the Durham's rule. The Curran's rule states that an accused person will not be criminally responsible if at the time of committing the act, he did not have the capacity to regulate his conduct to the requirements of law as a result of mental disease or defect. So according to the rule, it was said that during the time of commission of crime, the individual may have knowledge that what he was doing was wrong, but he neither had the capacity nor the will to control or adjust his act. Therefore, such person should not be held responsible. Next is the American Law Institute or the ALI test of 1970. The ALI test 
held that a person is not responsible for criminal conduct if at the time of such criminal conduct as a result of a mental disease or defect he lacks substantial capacity either to appreciate the wrongfulness of his conduct or to adjust his conduct to the requirements of law it was considered as a significant affair with respect or reference to criminal responsibility and moves forward from the mcnaughton rule and durham's rule instead of knowing the difference between right and wrong the defendant is now subjected to appreciate it similarly it was not assumed merely the criminal act to be a product of mental disease or mental defect the defendant has to prove that due to mental disease the accused person lacks the substantial capacity to appreciate his behavior or obey the law now we will study about the indian perspective or the indian view point based on these laws the law in india presumes every individual to be sane and responsible for his criminal act unless the contrary is proved similarly the law also presumes that every criminal act there must be a mens rea mens means mind and rea means criminal that is criminal intent of mind the prayer of mental unsoundness is usually brought forward in criminal cases in order to escape the punishment because if it is proved that a person is mentally ill then the accused is not held guilty if such a statement is raised then the burden of proving the mental unsoundness lies on the defense the plea of insanity is taken in bar of trial when the accused is insane and cannot plead in bar of conviction here the accused who was insane when the crime was committed in bar of infliction of capital punishment when a condemned prisoner is insane the present law on the defense of insanity is an adoption of the mcnaughton's rule and is contained in section 84 of ipc section 84 of ipc states that nothing is an offense which is done by a person who at the time of doing it is by reason of unsoundness of mind incapable of knowing the nature of the act or that he is doing what is either wrong or contrary to law reviewing this section it reveals that if a mentally ill person has to be exempted from the criminal responsibility then it must be shown that the unsoundness of mind existed at the time of committing the crime or during the commission of crime the unsoundness of mind is of such degree that the accused person is unable to know the nature of the act that he or she committed or if he knows the nature of act he is unable to understand what he is doing is either wrong or contrary to law thus a person can be exempted from the criminal responsibility if his intellectual or the cognitive functions have been affected by unsoundness of mind the idiots imbeciles and persons who are deprived of all these understanding are not responsible for the criminal offenses and do not present any difficulty in the court of law difficulty however arises in those cases where person labors under a partial delusion and are otherwise quite normal or sane next we will study about the doctrine of diminished responsibility or partial responsibility it provides that though a person may not be insane in the common meaning of the word his responsibility for criminal actions may have been reduced by some mental impairment albeit temporary it is argued that mcnaughton rule has offered right wrong test if a person wants exemption from his criminal act on grounds of insanity it must be clearly proved that his cognitive or the intellectual 
faculties have been affected by unsoundness of mind. Moreover, the unsoundness of mind is of such degree or nature that he is unable to understand the nature or quality of his act or was unable to understand what he was doing was wrong. The McNaughton rule has been criticized with an argument that some form of mental illness affect person's volition or power to act or there are other disorders such as impulse, neurosis or the personality disorder without impairing his cognitive functioning. The McNaughton rule laid stress on the cognitive faculties of a person and did not take notice of the impairment or emotional or volitional factors. It is suggested that thou such persons are quite responsible for their acts but should be considered partially responsible for their acts owing to such form of mental illness and these persons should receive less punishment. Next we will study about the other conditions pertaining to these specific responsibilities. Criminal responsibilities of an in some special circumstances are considered here in this module. There are certain conditions which are ambiguous and cause difficulty to medical person or the investigating officer. These conditions deserve greater attention and the doctors should be cautious while dealing with such cases. So taking first we have the somnambulism. It is the condition in which a person walks about in his sleep and therefore is also called as sleepwalking. The person is not held responsible for any unlawful act committed during sleepwalking stage or state. Next is somnolentia or also known as semi-somnolence. It is a condition midway between sleep and wakefulness. The person is not held responsible for any unlawful act committed during the somnolentia state. Third is the hypnotism or mesmerism. Hypnotism or mesmerism is a condition where a trance or sleep like state is induced by a process of suggestion. A hypnotized person may do acts as per orders given by a hypnotizer. After wearing of hypnotism, the person does not remember the acts done by him. Hypnotism cannot be pleaded as defense in criminal acts. Both parties that is the hypnotizer and the hypnotic person are held guilty. Fourth is the state of drunkenness. If a person voluntarily consumes alcohol or an intoxicating drink with knowledge or intent and commits crime under the influence of that drink, then the person is held responsible for his act under section 86 of IPC. However, if any intoxicant was administered to that individual or person without his knowledge or against his will, then the person is not held responsible for his act under section 85 of IPC or Indian Penal Code. Students, I will summarize all that we have studied in this module. Here in this module, we have studied about the various types of civil and criminal responsibilities. A mentally ill person is liable for tort unless the disease of mind is so great that he cannot understand the nature and consequence of his act. The law in India presumes every individual to be sane and responsible for his criminal act unless the contrary is proved. The present law of the defense of insanity is an adoption of the McNaughton's rule and is contained under the section 84 of Indian Penal Code or IPC.